Well, thank you for the introduction. I will talk about the um, what the foundation uses the money for and how it is all developed. And uh, first, we should clarify what the foundation is. And for in that sense, it has been good that Simon has said the word ecosystem. You would see it's even still a small it's even still a small part of um, of what's actually uh, there is this one yeah no it's not working. There's even <laughs> it's only a small part of um, your, of the ecosystem that's in place, and even within that, the uh, foundation is a very small section only out of it. You could all, also get out the, this uh, gist in Andy's talks this morning, where he mentioned how much external projects are there, and which are all not under control of the foundation. So we are really talking only about this um, th these core bits that are. Um, that have a yellow background, and the editing software means that we have uh, we paying for some development of the ID, and but it has not been founded by um, by the foundation. So, what does uh, frugal mean here? Mean it means um, we are actually running this business, this core business, on next to nothing. I've decided to have two companies here that um, at exactly that business model, collecting um, collecting map data. The price for this is, is that the data is very old um, because these uh, companies have gone uh, out of business seven years after um, OpenStreetMap was founded and when OpenStreetMap was already of sizable value. And um, so you see that the foundation in principle spends next to, uh, next to no money. So um, there's no reason to fear that we uh, waste money on anything. If you want something more reason to compare to, I can refer to the keynote introduction where um, Alan has mentioned that the Linux Foundation runs on a business of 300 million this year and uh, the Wikimedia Foundation of, if I remember correctly, 150 million. This would be a little bit uh, lower than the Teleatlas thing, but um, still the foundation would uh, compare as uh, next to nothing in size to this, still delivering the whole world with uh, map data. So um, another thing you might assume, people are puzzled because um, this year um, finances looked a lot different than before and we have talked a lot about this. And the reason for this is that we in principle, the OSM foundation had um, a lot of things, events that were uh, fiscally relevant. Um, OpenStreetMap started in 2004. In 2006, the uh, foundation was established. It was a very good decision by Steve Coast, by the way, to have it. But then a lot of things happened with OpenStreetMap, and it had, had relatively little influence on, uh, on the finances. That just engraved this license change, which was absolutely disrupting and keeping the community busy for years but it has relatively little influence on the finances, just to make clear it's not that they have nothing. But then in principle in 2016 and much more in 2021, the foundation decided ultimately to really spend money. And this has started with uh, having an administrative assistant, which means that uh, we now are much more reliably um, answering inquiries and um, have much better response times and um, have really a working in our structure. And um, in 2021, 2023, it really changed a lot when uh, we started to employ someone, when we started to run operations out of a data center at large scale and to do our own and pay for the full bills for this. It's still not true, but uh, there's a lot of more operations that we are responsible now for. And that's the important thing you should keep in mind. Um, we had, for a long time, the foundation had been a very, very small thing, shoestring is the right word, because um, not only the volunteer work, because all the, the hardware and all the system administration time and even the administration itself had been uh, donated by other people and other organizations. And uh, it's only that in around 2020, um, the, organ the, the OpenStreetMap has grown so big that it was untenable to just uh, rely on everybody else's uh, goodwill. And so we are now really an organization that um, has a responsibility for, for an employee, for um, 
for running data center operations and so on and so on. And this is um, so new that um, the official fiscal report about the first year where this uh, came into place is still not made, is still not yet made. This has been approved by the, uh, um, by the British um, administration, the report, but uh, to our own articles of association, I will present this in December at the, um, at the AGM. So it's really, it's really that new. So, um, so you see a lot of disruption in the finances right now just because it's the, uh, it's the effect of the foundation becoming responsible for, uh, for people and for, uh, for bare metal. And I've also included the 2018 thing, the, uh, this failure to make clear. You will see in future years um, a lot of um, budgeted items that will not realize. This is just the foundation regularly tries to achieve things and they may fail on other things than, uh, than money. And in this case, we didn't find someone who was uh, capable or willing to do, more willing to do this. So it's normal that we would, in some disciplines, stay a lot below the budget just because we find out that there was no adequate people or not a good environment to ultimately do the thing. On the upside, I've just heard from, from Paul that the, the operations working group managed to, to be more efficient on the servers and ended up that they needed to buy less servers than they need. So it's also the way that it can happen that the actual expenditures are a lot lower than the budgeted ones. Just because it turns out we are running a lot of things that are very novel, not only to us, often also to the world at, all, um, at large. And so you will see in future budgets for sure items that do not realize. One problem of this year, and I will come later to this, is that we had a lot overestimated um, these optional parts. And so the budget was ridiculously high. But we will fix this in the next year. So. Um, as these numbers are basically um, not useful to um, read off and think about, I try to visualize this with a Senkei diagram. A credit to Jium for the good idea. And um, what you see is, um, the first thing what you see is um, that uh, the state of the map when it takes place, there's only one instance in 2022 where this actually came into budget because we had Corona the two years before that it's both a huge expense and a huge income. There had been uh, a mindset to see the, um, the sotum mostly about the surplus it brings into the, uh, into the, um, into the OSM's um, income. And so I tried to reduce this diagram, make it a little bit um, simpler by just showing this uh, state of the map surplus in, instead of the expense and income based on this. And now, uh, the, what you see is a couple of things. First, um, over the years, it has changed what, is, um, what are the large expenses. We had, being an organization that uh, had mostly been um, a, well, a cover for uh, volunteer operations or the legal uh, grounds for low volunteer operations, the uh, micro grants in 2020, this were the other working group expenses, had been a huge expense relatively to everyone everything else. And then in 2021, we started with equipping the data center, our data center racks. It had been a huge uh, expense by the operations working group. And in the upcoming, in the following years, um, it's uh, really, we are paying a full-time uh, system uh, site reliability engineer. And, um, this is really uh, what's the lion's share of the expenses, uh, site reliability engineer plus the expenses to, for hardware um, power and network connectivity. And also on the income side, um, we have learned through Corona that um, the state of the map isn't a reliable source of income, is not a reliable source of income. And uh, on top of this, um, it doesn't scale. You don't want to run a state of the map with 5,000 participants, and even then, you won't uh, have an, a scaling surplus. So um, we need to rely on other income sources. And in fact, um, we, um, we are striving to get the base budget uh, covered by corporate members. 
And, but we also, in the end, came to the conclusion to assure our independence. We should, as well, have every year a um, fundraising campaign to make sure that we are not totally dependent on the um, corporate income directly. On the upside, we have already a two years reserve. We managed to have this, and we want to have rather a bigger reserve in the upcoming years. And also, yeah, I've already mentioned this. Um, you see, the, these are the big points I have mentioned. In 2020, before we run the, um, before we run the data center and the system really engineer, the micro grants were the uh, dominating expense and looked large relative to everything else. And now it's, um, it's the data center and the site reliability engineer. So the other thing that you see, and it's why I have mentioned the 2018 thing, there is a lot that's going on into an, um, when we do a new thing, project risk that it doesn't realize, a lot of things that must be prepared. So there's a long time between the time when we fundraise for new ideas to be covered and when they come into place, just because it's, uh, the project itself must be done. So about the financial statement, this is um, this is uh, complies with British uh, laws and regulations, and in principle, it's it's a good thing, but we have some we have some problems uh, if we contrast it with how we run the organization. One problem is that it is uh, eleven to twenty three months behind, uh, and so it's not a good planning document. The planning document could try to align with this as much as possible. But you couldn't technically plan based on this financial statement. And um, the other thing got just uh, remedied. Um, we had over a long time, um, oh, the op I'm grateful to Paul here. We are going to have um, to think of servers in the future in terms of um, assets and deprecation, which sounds a little bit technical, but on the, on the user side, it means. Um, we have a good yearly average. You won't have a surprise because we have to buy many servers uh, in, in, in a single year. That's on, it's an only a problem of uh, liquidity. But as you have seen, we have enough reserves that we don't need to think about liquidity. So it's no longer a problem that the operations working group uh, operation style uh, is across with the, um, um, with the financial statement. So this got fixed or will be get fixed in the next year. And uh, still, what has happened this year, and probably will partly may uh, happen next year, is uh, that the planning document we used will look very different, both from the, uh, mostly from the financial statement we have made, because there are a lot of things um, where we need to think and talk about that aren't directly represented in the budget. This is um, tracking expenses, Obviously, tracking asset conversions is, is the thing that now we get out of um, because we we were used to um, to get the um, to make our yeah, to to translate between the depre deprecation and um, and thinking of servers as just buying them. And uh, I've just heard that addressing is not as scary as I thought it is, and. Um, a couple of other things need a lot of talk. Um, so we ended up this year, we have first tried to set up a proper budget and make it public, ended up with a much a ridiculously large inflated budget. I'm sorry for that. And uh, we hope that now that we know that we are close to 300,000 British pounds, what we actually will spend, we have a much better understanding of where the opportunities are to, to spend money on useful projects and um, well, how, how we would address risks and so on. So the next budget will look a lot lower because it's closer to what we know what projects will happen. And uh, so this year we're also of a kind that it's most used, had been useful for internal decision making. And I'm sorry, we're at the point where it had been confusing donors. So um, we will go forward with uh, having probably multiple documents. One is, of course, the British law abiding thing you have seen. 
There is um, also an initiative, I'm grateful to Courtney for this point, uh, to make it more intuitive for um, US users of this. Um, there will be still um, a separate planning document. Um, we strive to get the, uh, we strive to get the uh, planning more and more in terms of ordinary um, budgeting, but we are still not there. It gets better, better every year. We are happy for the humongous support we got from the operations working group for this. And, um, but in the end, even um, if our operation working groups um, does, uh, does the good work of, um, of, comply or of getting close to standard accounting, it's still that the ordinary mapper who should be able to understand finances doesn't necessarily have a course in accounting. So we will, in the end, also have some, um, some simplified document as much as possible to also give lay, completely lay people an understanding of what's going financially on. So to sum all things up, the first and most important thing is um, the finances from 2004 to 2021 had been a totally different thing from what we have now in the upcoming years because the underlying organization and uh, mission has substantially changed. We are now running from uh, for what we have to um, to keep the lights on and uh, to do progress at a normal rate. We are now at a budget which is uh, the minimum at about 300,000, 350,000 British pounds. We um, we strive to have a cash reserve for two years, and um, we have. We are. I'm extremely grateful for the fundraising campaign that has both been uh, managed by the finances committee. And that's not only the board, but also we had from the communications uh, working group coordinator by, uh, Courtney in the team. And um, in particular, Michael, uh, Michael Maroon from the board has done a lot to, to get this up and running. And we should all share a piece of, uh, of uh, gratitude towards him because really he ensured that, the, that now again, the income from increased um, from the increased corporate memberships and from the um, from, uh, from the fundraising uh, drive, now again meet the uh, meet the income. We will also, as I have told before, we want to assure our independence. We get our independence uh, from not completely relying on corporate uh, income. So we will have from now on a yearly fundraising drive to ensure that we can demonstrate that we are um, a good deal independent of um, the corporate members, the members, although they, uh, they bring in the lion's share of money. Thank you for the attention. It's nice to see that there's gonna be plans to make the financials more visual, visually like understandable. Any questions? Could ask the other board members if they still speak with me. Um, <laughs> I had been a little bit of discussion whether we should openly uh, admit that we are still learning budgeting because we are seeing a completely different level of uh, of uh, challenge right now running a real organization. At least that's mine. Sorry, it was not a tricky question, but I want to repo, uh, re repeat a request to, if you can, then you are really, really asked to donate. And f thanks for anyone who did it already or will do. Yeah, it's a good point. Maybe we should ask Paul. No, please start asking. I'm on the OWG and I just want to put out a call that um, because the OWG is a big part of the budget, we do a lot of planning and we could, of course, use vol more volunteers on the OWG for many things, but one of the things is helping with the planning since it, it's a fair amount of work. Okay, thank you. 
Yeah, hi, Roland. In the work that I used to do with the working groups and on the management board, one of the uh, biggest difficulties that we had was managing spend during the year. The working groups would put in a budget, but then it wasn't ever clear to the members of the working group how much had been spent already during the year. Has that any of that changed recently, or is it still focused more on accounting rather than uh, budgeting? Well, we never got a request in that direction, and um, to go through the working groups and what bills they have produced, um, I think there are two working groups that really um, have money in their hands. This, uh, this is the state of the MAP working groups, which is very experienced in doing budgeting. And um, on the other hand, it's the operations working group, which is now also very experienced, uh, ex experienced in handing money. So um, these are the two uh, working groups that really spend money. From the other working groups, there are just so, so few requests that the question never came up. There is some spending by the license working group to defend our licenses, but this is basically, as I've understood, it is basically uh, dictated by the uh, schedule when you have to renew the uh, trademarks, and it's not so much that they have to manage their budget. I, if, they, if the trademark needs to be renewed, then it needs to be renewed, and uh, the outcome of we need to renew it, but it is over budget, but probably that we would raise the budget. So um, the, the question had never appeared, I think at the moment where the question appeared, we will uh, start to, to give out this information. One thing I have learned over the time is um, how difficult information is. So I would, um, I would form the tools and uh, bring the tools really into form when the request comes in to ensure that the information is given in a form that is really useful for the working group. I will throw it to you. Um, on, on the actuals and on the budget tracking, of course we have a spreadsheet and of course we track to make sure we don't completely overrun the budget. Um, we haven't shared that with the working groups yet, um, but if indeed, if that's the thing the working groups need, uh, it, it, we should, we should. There's no reason why we haven't shared it with the working groups, but we do track it. Totally agree. It's even if they want, they don't need to demonstrate that they need it. Even if they just want or ask for it, they would immediately get it. On the OWG side, we the budget consists of items for specific things. So we know if we've gotten those things or not. So we have a good idea. And we consistently have been coming in under budget anyway. So we haven't, it hasn't been a huge concern. Thank you. Any more questions? And a big thank you to all the donors. It's more important to applaud the donors and, uh, than me.